Well, that looks pretty fancy. Look at that. Sniper. Hi there. Welcome to BSF Recovery Team. We're here with David from Midwest Customs. And he brought me a gift. He brought me a Sniper EFI, and he's going to help me put it on the record today. It's not a firearm. It's fuel delivery system. Well, we're going to have to get off your card. Carb. Install a fuel injection unit and then do some wiring because it requires a tax signal. We got to put an O2 sensor on there. We got to put a coolant temp sensor in there so that way the system can read that. Okay. And then we'll have to do some take the handheld and do a little bit of programming to tell it what engine it is and what we all have to do on here. You know, we okay. may have to update the firmware on it. Okay. Um, but, and then we should be able to hit the key and it should start right off. And then we'll have to let the tr truck get up to idle to let it start learn. I mean, get up to temperature so that way it'll start so learning. It'll learn itself. Yeah, it needs to be okay. 160 degrees and it'll start learning. And the nice thing about this is that it'll display your temp on here, your tack on here, your fuel to air ratio, uh -huh. and everything else. If you look here on the manual, it even shows it. So it display you and there, I think we can even configure some other stuff so you could uh, literally you wouldn't even need your gauge cluster unless you wanted RPM. Right, I power. don't read it most of the time <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, this thing will do that. It's self-learning. It's nice. It's simple. Excellent. And it'll help you out in Utah. Yes. Yes, that'll help out a lot in some of the angles and the ledges and in the altitude. And the nice thing about this system is it's a direct replacement for a four barrel carb. Excellent. It bolts literally on an and you don't have to have another intake. It's just it take bolt, your carb yep. off, bolt it on. Bolt it right on. So, Wonderful. Sounds great. And just in time, because we're heading out there for the record games. What are you up to? I am going to start insulating the inside of the bathroom because for Christmas, I got my doorbell system. So it's killing me that I can't get this up yet uh -huh. until this is done. What are you insulating it for? Well, my panel. I thought it might be for sound. Well... So people outside won't hear flatulence. Well, yeah, true, but also to keep the warmth in here. That's true too. Mm -hmm. Got to keep your bottom warm when you're uh, yeah, you taking care of business. You don't want to sit on a cold seat and be like, ooh, it all goes back up. That is what I'm working on today since Eric is working on the record. He kicked me off my job. What is this? You bring, bring in a stool and you leave it the snow on it? What, well, you're looking yeah, for a hazard? It was, it was already? in the other garage. No, it'll melt off quick. But we need the step stools. Because, you know, the wrecker's kind of tall. Well, I suppose the first thing is to take the carburetor off. Yeah. <laughs> you use it. I certainly do. It ain't like some of the stuff in my shop where I, it's going to be all pavement stuff. What do we need then? 716ths or half inch, I can't remember. Or them bolts. I'm grabbing bolts. And an adjustable for the AN fitting that you have for the fuel up to the carb. We'll have to transfer your um, idle stop switch because I called Holly to see if we could set a, do it and. Well, that one's shorted out right now. Yeah. So we'll leave it off for now. But um, our idle up switch, but I talked to Holly and with the sniper, we there's no way to do that if we were installing a Terminator or a Dominator set up on here. With like a port, we'd be able to do it. So I'll have to put a mechanical. You'll have to, like what you have on here now. Yep. Actually, that's what it was. I gotta take the solenoid out. Okay, we tap into the lines there. Tap into the returns. And we'll have a, the return line will be here. So okay. we'll have to tuck that here. And with the sniper, you can take and feed here, here, or here. Okay. So I think we'll feed it here. Probably. So we'll have to change that out on it, but that's an easy thing. No big deal. Yeah. All right. Well, 
and say goodbye. Goodbye. Well, it's worked well, but we're gonna try something else. All right. New gasket? Holy oh, moly. Of Come on, flip on there. Oh. Where's Look at that. Pretty. Then I'll have to just cut this one down. Yep. And run it in the back there. Yep. Okay, the tab isn't gonna hold that straight. Well, the one from the carburetor isn't quite gonna work. So we had to go searching and we found one from Quadrajet that should work. Is that other one still off back? Yeah, I left it on. Definitely won't fit with this bar all the way across to the other stud um, because the uh, idle air control or the IAC motor is in the way. So we're gonna cut it off right here and hopefully the single uh, stud hole and the pin will line up properly and hold it in place. That mount is for a quadrajet. Holly does make a direct mount that'll bolt up to a quadrajet intake too. So for any of you out there that want to do it, you can, and without having to change your intake manual to the square bore intake, you can get a, a sniper that'll have a quadrajet on it. So it makes it a lot easier for some guys out there that are just wanting to upgrade without having to tear the motor apart. Really upgrade this thing. I think that'll work. Well, one of the nuts are here. I don't know where you put the third, the fourth nut. Don't say nuts around Mara. Hello. Are you having more fun than you're entitled to? Of course. I get to play with a staple gun and a hammer. Well, the hammer's always good. Oh, I love playing with hammers and staple guns and everything I can. Well, that's good. Catch you later. Catch you later. Hey, Eric, look at this. Dave is really getting into his work. He certainly is. <laughs> throttle linkage is hooked up. Look at that. We can get full throttle. We'll put springs on. You mean you want return springs? I suppose full throttle all the time wouldn't be a good thing. No. Yes, we definitely want return springs. Having a uh, little bit of a stiffer throttle when you're off-road uh, doesn't hurt at all. This truck would know what to do with brand new high dollar parts on it. Might get an organ rejection. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, the surprise factor, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Started out, I was doing recovery all the time. Uh, all my four-wheeling buddies were always asking me for help to recover their vehicles and stuff like that. And uh, some of the other club members uh, for our event at Trollhagen built dedicated recovery trucks. The actual original one was Rich Christensen's and it was called the Retriever. And it was a high body Ford um, with 38s on it and no box and just a record boom on the back. But anyway, I fell in love with doing recoveries and uh, wanted to do them and kind of needed a way to uh, do it. <laughs> to be able to afford uh, running a dedicated off-road recovery rig. Um, about the same time, YouTube came around and there was rumors that you could earn money uh, off of YouTube. So I thought that would be a perfect way to uh, get started Get started and help support the wrecker. So that's how it started. And this is where we're at now. <laughs> What's happening now? Is it too short on one end? PCV valve. Uh, hose is a little bit too short so we're gonna make a new one and you know what I think I might even have some more of this we might be able to make it pretty uh, it doesn't okay. make it any better it just makes <laughs> it pretty. pretty pretty and the off-road wrecker <laughs> uh, that that's an oxymoron there <laughs> you think you could keep the big stuff from hitting the right. pump and the pump yep. The second one. But that, the switch valve is right under here. So be able to just run it all the way and then use the steel line from the switch valve forward. Yep. And bypass the switch valve. Yep. 
Well, Dave, what are you doing here? I am hooking up the fuel lines to the factory lines. Eric's making a cross member for the fuel pump so we can tie it in between the factory lines and these on this frame ramp. Aha. Uh -huh. okay. So I'm just trying to run the lines. This will work perfect because that'll bolt on to the cross member and then we can put all the pump and everything uh, filters right here. Marking utensil. Where did I lose that? The last place you used it. <laughs> Works better than an icrometer. A little bit better. We What's should probably on? cut them off a little shorter. You think? I think so. This, it mounts as a unit onto the underside. It's part of the fuel injection conversion. Yeah, we want to keep it close to the tank because these pumps don't draw very well, but they push really good. And they need to push about 60 pounds of fill pressure. Because you have a pre-filter which is, gets the big stuff from keeping hitting the pump and then a smaller one for a smaller micron to keep from sending something to the injectors. So we gotta get the fuel line off of the tank here. There we go. And you didn't want to drop the tank. And I didn't want to drop the tank. But last time I had the tank out, I made this line long enough so we don't have to drop the tank. We can just uh, we can just uncoil it here and go over to our new pump. We're creating a wire here for power source for the electric fuel pump. Really? Yeah. Is it one continuous wire? It is. Wow. No more butt connectors, huh? No. We are... Well, at least for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hate to ask silly questions. What, what are you doing, Dave? Taking off the shield so we can get to the fuel transfer switch to take it off. Because for one thing, he doesn't have a second take on. And we need it from the pump here to the steel lines over here. Aha, uh -huh. thank you for that uh, information. Okay, Hutner, you're gonna close Dave in? Is that what you're gonna do? Yeah, we're working on doing that. No, Eric, if you had a lift, it'd be a whole lot easier to be videoing this. Yes, it would. We'll have to talk to Challenger Lifts about that. They're gonna be a vendor at, uh, at the, games? the record games. Well, how nice of them. Yep, sure would make my job easier. <laughs> <laughs> Might even make Eric's and Dave's job easier. A little easier, yeah. This in after yep, we're... run that in after we're done playing with it. Yep. Okay, so power ground. We got a key on. Tech signal, ignition, and our O2 sensor. We're gonna drill a hole for an O2 sensor in our pipe here so we can clamp on a bung and that'll do for now until I make some real exhaust for this thing. Okay, it's gonna be on for a while. <laughs> the temporary, it becomes permanent. With this stuff, we gotta set to do with initial parameters. Pretty much self-explanatory. You just follow what it says. It asks you a couple of qu questions about the size of the motor, the how many cylinders. Eric, you said this is a 3D3? Or is it a 355? Or what no, is it? it's a 350 with a 60 overboard, actually. So it'd be... 360 cubic inch. Okay. So we just got to get that put in there. What do you want the idle set at, Eric? Um, 800? Yeah, it'll work. You can go go in and change this. Uh, Eric's uh, mild cam. None. We're not using any of Holly's coils or distributors. It's gonna load. Just please cycle the ignition. 
We don't have everything fully hooked up yet. It's just right now to do this. And we'll get it hooked up here in a minute when Eric's done putting in the O2 sensor. It's done. That's all it takes to set up a holly. In the meantime, Eric's going to have multiple gauges to tell him what's all going on with the engine. How about that? And so. it's customizable, right? Yes. So it'll show the RPMs, coolant temperature, the fuel ratios, everything. So it'll make it nice for them. Last wire to hook up. A lot oh. of them are temporary right now. But the last wire to hook up uh, is the tax signal wire. And then we can fire it up. Okay, ready? Yep. Listen to that, guys. <laughs> you got your RPM here, your air ratio, air fuel ratio, target air fuel ratio, coolant temp. This is whether current learn zero, learn status not learned yet. Yep. So this will go eventually go away. It's got to get up to 160 degrees to start learning. If you hit the throttle, there should be an easy mess out there, too. Sounds pretty good. We'll have to get it warmed up, let it learn. But I think this is going to work good. That was sweet how fast it started. Yeah, I like it. Well, it runs, and it runs pretty good. I think we did a good job. I want to thank you very much, and uh, let's tell them a little bit about your shop. I do, my shop is, I do anything from upholstery to full-blown builds. Last year, it just boomed, and it went from upholstery to full-blown builds. Where'd you learn your trade? I went out to WildTech, so I knew everything. I mean, I got a... Customer's car, a 38 Chevy I'm doing for a customer. I got a Mustang in my shop right now that it's getting fuel injection on a straight six, a convertible top, put it together, disc brake conversion. And then here too, here this coming week, I go pick up a Austin Healy Sprint or Frog Eyed Sprint or what's the other thing? Bug Eyed Sprite. Frog Eyed Sprite here. And that's gonna be detail it up, put it back together. For the customer uh -huh. and then i got a willie's toy that i was talking to eric about maybe trying to wink wink come down help me film <laughs> help me build it into a wrecker myself yeah my buddy introduced me to his eric's videos about four years ago so and i've been following him ever since and it's just cool what he's been able to do with this wrecker <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm amazed that it holds up to what I put it through. I really Well, am. this is your second one, you got to remember. <laughs> well, that's true. I, mean, I did break a frame. So, this one's been reframed. If people want to get a hold of me, I gave Eric business cards. Um, the other way to get a hold of me is it's Midwest Customs, LLC on Facebook or Instagram. So, yes, it is a slightly used sniper unit. Um, but it seems to be working really good, so I'm glad to have it, and I thank you very much. Well, yeah, it definitely started a lot easier, according to everybody here. It sure <laughs> did. <laughs> we'll see how it works out in Utah. Thanks for watching BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling, be safe out there, and maybe we'll see you in the woods. Get where you're able to reach the powers of wheeling. I am going to be building her a cushion. <laughs> A Let's cushion? The, yes. About three inches? If we go four, that'll give it'll be right about here on you. And it'll allow it to push back, you know, give. And then it'd be four inches back here, so it'd be lean back. So it'd be about there. If we go straight up, would that work? Mm hmm Yeah, so if we build a cushion, that'll work for her. So that way she can drive the wrecker. <laughs> steal the wrecker. <laughs> hey, when I drive the wrecker, I don't hit nothing.
<laughs> it's your story. You can tell it however Seriously. you want. Watch, watch the ladies rock when he was filming me driving <laughs> like up in Gilbert. I didn't hit anything and I drove the truck and stole it. He drives it and damages my side. All I need to do is some other measuring here just to get 11 inches, 20 inches wide by what's. Just do the whole thing, 28. So I'll go write that measurements down and I'll build her a cushion. And hopefully when they go out Hello? sand hollow for the Toast Records, they'll stop by my shop and pick it up.